Let's bring in Kaylee McEnany. She is the White House Press Secretary. Good morning to you. You there? Good morning. There you yes. are. Good morning. Uh, so George Floyd, he is buried. We watched that memorial, that touching memorial service yesterday. The president has come out and said that he has a list of proposals for police reform, and he's going to work with Tim Scott and, and his group as well. What does that look like, Kaylee? Yeah, so, you know, I won't get ahead of the president, but what I will say to you, Ainsley, is there has been tremendous work done on this and a lot of progress over the last few days. Uh, the president has been reviewing proposals and his team. Chief of Staff Mark Meadows went to the Hill yesterday with senior advisor Jared Kushner and Jerron Smith, um, and they had a very positive meeting with Senator Scott. Uh, it was very productive, and we do believe that we will have proactive policy prescriptions, whether that means legislation or an executive order. Will there be, I saw, uh, Kaylee, that there was a Monday, there was a law enforcement roundtable. Will there be a race roundtable, too, uh, where the president brings in uh, African-American leaders and hears what they say and what they want, what their perceptions and reality is? So I won't get ahead of announcing the president's schedule and upcoming events that haven't already been previously announced, but that was a very productive roundtable uh, with law enforcement officers and other stakeholders and attorneys general from across the nation. Um, it was very productive. I believe that the police want to see some sort of reform, too. They recognize the deep injustice that was done uh, to George Floyd, and we all want to move together as one united country while keeping in mind the great work our law enforcement officers do. They are, after all, the thin blue line that divides us um, from chaos and order and keeps us on the side of order. Indeed. Um, you know, Kaylee, there are a lot of people who are talking about now is the time to defund the police because of what happened to George Floyd. And I know that about a dozen attorney generals from various states have come out and said it's dangerous, it's reckless, it uh, will increase crime, not reforming law enforcement. What do you think? That's exactly right. Under President Trump, we're seeing decreases in crime. Uh, but under blue state governors and blue state mayors, we're seeing the exact opposite uh, with this proposal. This is appalling. It is ludicrous. It is nonsensical to take police out of society. Let's just look at L.A. for a second. When the L.A. mayor said, I'm going to remove $150 million from LAPD. Well, what happened the next week? We saw homicides go up in L.A. by 250 percent and shootings go up by 50 it is anarchy. It is chaos when we don't recognize that police serve a valuable function in this society. And most police officers, the vast majority, are good domestic heroes out there protecting us each and every day. All right, Kaylee, uh, amid Corona, the president said we're not going to North Carolina for the RNC. I love the folks of North Carolina, but you're not able to host us. So he's looking for a new venue. Washington Post headline says GOP expects to move its convention to Jacksonville after dispute with North Carolina over pandemic safeguards. And then John Roberts, uh, who you know works at Fox and um, uh, our friend, he said that no decision has been made. He's talked to his sources there. He says officials tell me the GOP has not yet settled on an alternate site for the August convention. Real Donald Trump speech. Top contenders are Jacksonville, Savannah, uh, Nashville, Phoenix, and Dallas. A decision will have to be made very soon. Can you tell us more about this? And if you can't announce what city, can you tell us when you'll be able to? So there have been a number of cities under consideration. The president loves the state of North Carolina, really wanted to have it there. But unfortunately, you have a governor there uh, who's not willing to say, yes, you can move forward. It's a grave injustice to his state, taking a lot of um, economic boom out of there that comes with a convention. Um, so no decision has been made. But for further comment on that, I'd redirect you to the RNC and to the campaign. So yesterday, the president, uh, Kaylee, uh, was a, uh, tweeted out that this Buffalo protester, the 75-year-old who was shoved to the ground by a police officer, might have been part of Antifa and a provocateur in order to get that type of reaction, just to paraphrase. Could you expand on that? Does the president think that this, this guy is part of Antifa? So the president was raising questions based on a report that he saw. Uh, there are questions that need to be asked. In every case, we can't jump on one side uh, without looking at all the facts at play. This individual had some very questionable tweets, some profanity-laden tweets um, about police officers. Of course, no one condones any sort of violence. We need the appropriate amount of force used in any interaction. But there are a lot of questions in that case. In fact, you had 56 police officers who resigned in protest of how their fellow officers were treated. Um, so I think we need to ask why those officers resigned, what happened, what facts were on the ground, um, and the president was just raising some of those questions. 
And Kaylee, what about the timing of it in the middle of the George Floyd ceremonies and the last of which a series of of, uh, of long goodbyes for George Floyd and all the unrest in the country was, do you think the timing was right? Look, the president has acknowledged so many times, and rightfully so, the injustice with George Floyd. He was uh, v upset when he saw that video. As I noted, he gave an entire speech um, about Mr. Floyd and the grave injustice there. Um, but the president was raising some questions, some legitimate ones, about that particular interaction, and it's his prerogative to do so. Kaylee, I was just uh, I was just thinking I'd, I'd like to go back on topic for just a second to uh, you know the Washington Post story that uh, Republicans have settled on Jacksonville as the site for the RNC. Apparently, they would still have some convention activities at, in Charlotte because of contracts, but then the big celebratory meeting, the big hall, would be there in Jacksonville. Is this just a trial balloon that, uh, you know, three Republicans speaking to The Washington Post is floating? And this really is just the way it's, it's the, an ultimatum from the president of the United States. This is the way he negotiates. Last chance, unless you say we can go into the big room in Charlotte, we're going to head out of town, probably go to Jacksonville. Look, the president is the great negotiator. I would note that up front. But um, on this, you know, I'd really direct you to the RNC, to the campaign, and note that the president is very frustrated uh, with the politically motivated governor of North Carolina, who is not doing what's in the best interest of his state, which is to bring economic boom and economic activity and the great resources that would come with holding a convention. Okay, Kaylee, uh, coronavirus restrictions, some are being li lifted. Uh, companies are opening up. NASDAQ hitting 10,000, crossing 10,000 for the first time, uh, hitting a new record. And business owners, they want to they get back to work. Brian interviewed, he had a great interview with a lady named Naomi uh, Gullickson. She's the owner of a, of a small store called Gifted in New York. This is what she says about the mixed messages from our state reopening. Listen. It gives me the sense that our leaders here in this state are not looking out for the small businesses that make every small community thrive. It's sad. I am worried. I don't know what's going to happen. I've had an amazingly supportive community for 14 years, so I hope that they come back. It's hard, Kaylee, because people are not able to work in the city, most people, but yet you see all these, you know, you saw those rioters and people out on the street. And meanwhile, these people that are hurting so badly, their stores are getting looted and they have to stay at home and, and you know, can't defend themselves or can't even open up. Yeah, What's your reaction? Exactly. It's exactly right, Ainsley. Look, one of the things lost last week is that there were actually 300,000 jobs created for black Americans in the last jobs report, which was a huge boom. Uh, economists were dead wrong. They thought we'd lose 7.5 million jobs. We gained 2.5 million under President Trump. But one of the other things that happened, in addition to those jobs created for the black community, the labor force participation rate for black Americans increased, meaning there are more black Americans out in the workforce looking for a job. So it is incumbent upon blue state mayors, blue state governors, provide those jobs. There are people looking. They're out there. Reopen your states. Kelly McEnany, thanks so much for the insight. Uh, it's going to be another busy day at the White House. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you.